help you? I have an appointment with Dr. Sawyer. Okay, and your name, sir? Les Martin. Les Martin. Okay, see you at 9.30. Are you okay, sir? No, I'm not. I've got pretty bad chest pain. Okay, let me get Dr. Sawyer's nurse for you right away if you'd like to take a seat. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Jeff, I just checked in our 9.30, Mr. Martin, and he reports some chest pain, and I'm quite concerned about him. Could you go and check in? Sure. Thank you. Each year, hundreds of thousands of Americans have the most serious type of heart attack, known as an ST-elevated myocardial infarction, or STEMI, in which blood flow is completely blocked to a portion of the heart. Unless this blockage is eliminated quickly, the patient's health and life are at serious risk. Currently, around two-thirds of STEMI patients fail to receive the best available treatments to restore blood flow. Mission Lifeline seeks to save lives by closing the gaps that separate STEMI patients from timely access to appropriate treatments. Although Mission Lifeline is focused on improving the system of care for patients who suffer from a STEMI each year, improving that system will ultimately improve care for all heart attack patients. According to statistics provided by the Iowa Department of Public Health, cardiovascular diseases, including stroke, are the leading cause of death in Iowa. Heart attack and other ischemic heart disease is affecting approximately 90,000 Iowans right now. The overarching goal of Mission Lifeline STEMI is to reduce morbidity and mortality for STEMI and out-of-hospital cardiac arrest patients. We will improve their overall quality of care by performing pre-hospital 12 EDKGs, transmitting them to the hospital, following statewide guidelines and providing education and data collection. Each piece of the system has a common goal. Get the patient emergency medical attention immediately and move the patient to a primary PCI center. In this video, clinic staff are the next piece of the system of care. The healthcare providers in clinics will be referred to as first medical contact which is the first trained healthcare provider to assess and identify the signs and symptoms of a cardiac problem and start the system rolling. We will walk through the care of the patient presenting with chest pain, who is identified as having a serious cardiac issue, a STEMI heart attack. The system of care begins with the patient identifying signs and symptoms of a possible heart attack. Ideally, that person or someone with that person would call 911 and enter the emergency care system in that way. However, nationwide, our data shows that the majority of heart attack victims, especially in rural areas, drive themselves to the hospital. This happens for many reasons. Denial, embarrassment, thinking they can get there faster than if they waited for an ambulance, or not wanting to bother people. What we as healthcare providers try to help people understand is that they actually get to definitive treatment safer and faster by almost 30 minutes if they enter the system via EMS and they receive emergency treatment that can buy their heart muscle precious time while being transported to the PCI center or cath lab hospital. Les, what brings you in today? I'm not feeling so great. Well, what do you mean you're not feeling so great? Well, I'm feeling nauseated. I have chest pains and my left arm hurts. And I'm having a hard time breathing. Okay. I'm concerned that your heart might be involved and it's really important that we get a 12 lead EKG. Can we go ahead and do that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Have you ever had a 12 lead before? No. No. Have you ever had this kind of chest pain before? No. No? Okay. Is that chest pain getting better, worse, or staying the same? It's about the same. About the same? Les, you're doing great. I'm getting that EKG right now, okay? And we're going to get that to the doctor for him to look at. Okay. All right? Yeah, Emily, can you get Dr. Sawyer to come into room two? There are some changes on the 12 lead EKG. Thanks. Yeah, Jeff. Hey, Dr. Sawyer. Hey, I've got some concerns here. Um, I'm seeing ST elevation. and. A uh, few leads here. It's 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 showing STEMI on here. This is yeah, definitely a STEMI. That's let's get 911 going immediately. Call EMS, sir. Have you had uh, aspirin yet today? Yes, I did this morning. Very good. Okay, uh, take his vitals. Let's get this rolling right away. We'll do. 
Les, I'm concerned that you're having a heart attack, so I've called the ambulance to come get you, okay? I don't need an ambulance. I can drive it. The ambulance is the best way to go. They can start an IV and give you medication for that chest pain. Ultimately, we need to get you to a cath lab quickly so they can take care of this, okay? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Hey, thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, what do we got? We have a 75-year-old male patient who started having chest pain this morning while he was uh, having coffee. We're noticing ST changes, um, and then it also alerted us to a STEMI. EMS is also capable of transporting the patient safer and quicker than if they drove themselves. And most importantly, EMS can begin emergency treatment saving cardiac muscle and providing resuscitation efforts if a patient should cardiac arrest. Yeah, hi, this is Roy with Squad 51. Uh, we're in route with a 74-year-old gentleman who we sent in at 12 lead to you a little bit ago, and it is a confirmed STEMI. Um, we're supposed to be going directly to the cath lab from here, and we should be about 20 minutes out from now. Okay, excellent, thank you. Dispatch centers play a key role in working with the person calling 911 for help and are always striving for the best outcomes for each patient by partnering with EMS and the hospitals to overcome challenges in the system. The other pieces of the system are the non-PCI hospitals and PCI centers. Each have the goal of limiting time from first medical contact to device by limiting door in, door out times in the non-PCI hospital. Another common goal is to overlap transport services from rural areas, provide fibrolytic therapy or clot busting drugs to qualified patients that cannot get to PCI in less than 120 minutes, ultimately striving to get patients from first medical contact to device in less than 120 minutes when geographically possible. Every element within the system must work collaboratively to optimize the outcomes for STEMI patients. Interventional cardiologists from across the state of Iowa, working with Mission Lifeline, have developed a statewide guideline to assist non-PCI hospitals in the care and priorities of the STEMI patient. That guideline recommends a first medical contact to 12 lead ECG time of less than 10 minutes. STEMI heart attacks are at high risk for cardiac arrest. EMS can start resuscitation immediately, so we never want a patient to drive themselves to the hospital. Next is a door in to door out goal of less than 30 minutes. When EMS recognizes a STEMI in the field, the referral hospital can have ALS or air transport on the way before EMS arrives, shortening the time the patient is at the referral hospital. Well, thanks for calling. I, I do appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Hey, Dr. Sawyer, uh, yeah. I just got an uh, update from our, uh, our patient, Les. Mm -hmm. um, he had 100% blockage of his right coronary artery. Wow. Um, the angioplasty was successful, and he's now recovering in the ICU, um, and they're expecting him to be uh, discharged in about two to three days. Oh, my gosh, that's great news. Uh, what was our first medical contact to ECG time? About five to six minutes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, the, the guideline calls for under 10. Yeah. So yeah. we really nailed that. That's great. big part of that was the strong communication with EMS um, had a great deal to do with his, his positive outcome. That's fantastic. That's great news. Uh, we, we should look into getting some more brochures and pamphlets, paperwork from the American Heart Association to yeah. help our patients, educate them a little bit for the general public to make them aware of some of those signs and symptoms. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get a hold of Dixie and we'll see if we can uh, uh, get, those, uh, get that available. Very good, okay, thank you. Thanks. The PCI centers in Iowa are collecting large amounts of data that span the entire system of care. This will enable hospitals to benchmark across the state. The Mission Lifeline Task Force and Committees will allow for networking and the sharing of best practices across our state. It will be possible to watch the trends across Iowa to see the improvements we make. This data will also provide significant information that helps drive the science behind the guidelines that are also continually being updated and strengthened. Mission Lifeline goals save lives, improve outcomes, and restore health. 
thank you for joining us today. You will find this video a good resource for your team.